Hello. I defeated Andross's true form, but stuff still happened. So what's up? Hey, maybe don't send your literal DNA samples to a tech company. Genetic testing company 23andMe has suffered a massive user data breach, including user information associated with their genetic data. The hackers who stole the data have posted it online for sale and seem to be explicitly targeting Jews and other ethnic minorities. This is a great example of why the I don't need privacy because I've got nothing to hide argument falls short of anything. And even if you think you have nothing to hide, people that you know and love might have something to hide and can be derived from your data. If you use an unencrypted messaging app to tell somebody that someone else you know got an abortion in America, you're putting them at risk. But I digress into a tangent. That doesn't normally work that way. But please, consider what websites actually need to know about you. Does it need your real email? Does it need your real name? Does it need your real age and birthday? Does it need your real phone number? The answer is almost always probably not. You can use email platforms like Fastmail or systems like Google Voice to make throwaway email addresses and throwaway phone numbers. One of the easiest things that you can be doing is using a unique password and even a unique email address for every service that you use. A password manager will help you organize all of that and is generally safer than just using the same password everywhere. Also, use two-factor authentication. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna get off this topic now. Gavin Newsom has killed the vibe. California Governor Gavin Newsom has vetoed a bill which would have decriminalized natural hallucinogenics, think magic mushroom. The bill reached his desk and was supposed to be like, uh, oh, this is good for medical stuff, so we should decriminalize it. And he was like, nah, let's actually do a whole bunch of extra regulation about how it can be used for medical stuff before we decriminalize it. Cause that made a whole lot of sense for cannabis, right? Let's just do it again. That, that made sense. I'm a user of medical cannabis. The distinction between medical and recreational cannabis usage is fucking dumb. But we can't just go around decriminalizing things without finding a new way to replace it to get more people in jail. Gotta keep the cash flowing. Bandcamp is not in a good way. If you're not familiar, Bandcamp is a popular online music marketplace, mostly used by indie artists, but all sorts of folks, really. In March of 2022, Epic Games purchased Bandcamp for reason. And in recently of now, Epic Games sold Bandcamp, cause reason. But here's the thing, they sold Bandcamp. And that didn't necessarily include the employee. Suddenly hundreds of Bandcamp employees found out that they didn't have a new job offer from the new owner of Bandcamp. And for a while, they just didn't have access to their systems anymore. And Bandcamp was just kind of existing without oversight. The new owners of Bandcamp are a music licensing company called Song Trader. And they haven't really explained what the hell is going to happen to Bandcamp. They had a Zoom meeting where they were like, oh, we're gonna keep it friendly to artists. And then all the employees were like, cool, do I have a job? And they were like, I don't know. Weird. Universal Basic Income works. The Denver Basic Income Project has just published an interim report about six months in to a study they've been doing to see how does UBI affect people who need help. They have been working with three different payment plans. One is just a basic 50 bucks a month, but there's another that has a big upfront stipend and then routine payments of like 500 bucks. Their other plan is closer to $1,000 a month. And the idea is they're trying out different payment plans to see what kind of UBI gives the most impact for people. Only six months in, the results are inspiring. People are finding ways out of homelessness. They're getting jobs and able to enroll in classes, pay down debt and get out of the tents they've been sleeping in. It's almost like a great way to help people without means is to give them some means. You cannot budget your way out of poverty, and you certainly can't budget your way out of poverty if you don't even have a home. This is not the first study of UBI, and it's not the first study that shows that UBI works. Other cities have already done trial programs, and they've all seen positive results. And the cost is a drop in the bucket compared to the alternative cost of paying a bunch of cops to keep shuffling homeless people place to place. We could save a lot of money by simply improving people's lives. Wild. On this day in 1799, the HMS Lutine sank in a storm while carrying about 1,200,000 Great British Pounds worth of gold and silver. We're talking about as stereotypical of lost treasure at sea as it gets. There were many attempts at salvaging both the ships and that booty, but unfortunately the sea spread that booty all around the ocean floor. Said booty was kept in kind of makeshift barrels and whatnot that disintegrated nearly immediately, so not a whole lot of it was recovered. But boy, did people go through great lengths to touch that booty. Lightning round. Amazon's Alexa was claiming that the 2020 US presidential election was stolen, citing right-wing outlets. 
It has reportedly since been fixed. Relatedly, Mike Lindell, the MyPillow guy, is out of money and can no longer pay for his legal fees around the 2020 election fraud stuff. Here's the weather. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is likely to leave the Democrat Party, given that he's not very popular there and is running for president. Notably, he's not particularly popular among the Democrats for his anti-vax and conspiracy stances. Some dude was charged for stalking a woman by flying his plane over her house routinely for like years and apparently sometimes throwing tomatoes out of his plane at her house. That's, that's one way to do it. Don't do that. One of Meta's new AI chatbots is a relationship advice bot and it will kink shame you. If you don't adhere to heteronormative monogamous relationships, it's not interested. And finally for today, fashion company Prada will be helping in designing the next NASA spacesuits for an upcoming moon mission in 2025. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you think about today's stories and where you stand on the things that are happening. My name is Endeavorance. I may or may not be live this afternoon. It depends on whether or not I get a vet appointment for my dog. He's still not feeling super well, so please send some positive vibes his way. My name is Endeavorance. I'll be back on Wednesday. Take care and be well.